Thanks for watching Retro Tech Toys. Hey, I'm back again with this awesome Vilros keyboard and touchpad hub for the Raspberry Pi. Basically what this thing does is you fit your Raspberry Pi down inside and it kind of makes it like an all-in-one microcomputer. You get a keyboard and you get a mouse and all that good stuff. I'm really excited. I haven't tried this thing yet and I hadn't really read any reviews on it. I just thought I'd pick it up and give it a shot and see what it's all about. Opening up the box, we can see a pretty sturdy looking piece of kit here. It's uh, made of plastic and it doesn't seem like it's very breakable. It seems like the plastic's sturdy. Uh, it comes with a fan, but we're going to go ahead and use my Canna Kit fan, even though they're probably the same thing and they probably come from the same factory um, because they look very similar. And you get all your mounting screws and all that good stuff and you get a little tool to put it together and some instructions. And uh, that's about it there. Let's have a look at this. Around the back you see a dongle. Uh, this is not Bluetooth, it's wireless in that you have to use a dongle to plug it in, and there are two AAA batteries required to power the keyboard, and here is where we mount the Raspberry Pi, and that little flap that comes open is where you can put your SD card in once it's mounted. Uh, as you can see, this is where you set your Pi, and your, all your USB ports and your Ethernet jack and all of that fit out the side. Here's a little card that shows you how to hook your fan up. I already have my fan hooked up, so I don't have to worry about that, but if you need to do it, this is how you do it. Here is the uh, instruction manual for getting everything put together. And now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. All right, there are three points that you have to put screws in. Uh, you don't put screws into the fourth point. Uh, you'll worry about that once you get the whole thing back together. So leave that fourth one blank. You only have three screws anyway. So get those screwed in. And once you do that, we want to insert the AAA batteries and we want to plug in this wireless dongle into one of our USB 2.0 ports. Let's keep those 3.0 ports free. So let's get that plugged in. And once it's plugged in and we've got our batteries in place, which they go right there, we'll go ahead and pop those puppies in. I've got some cheap AAA batteries from the Dollar Tree. They'll do just fine. Let's get those inserted. There's the uh, battery cover, it just slides right into place. And uh, we're good to go. And there's a small little spot for you to kind of rest your fan in over here. You just kind of tuck it down in there and it stays in without having to put screws down or anything like that. And uh, once you get that in place, you just pop the cover on. That's got your Raspberry Pi inside. Make sure everything's in place and your fan doesn't come disconnected. And once you pop this uh, cover back on, you'll have six screws that you have to put in place. So let's get those six screws put in and then we're just about good to go. All right, now we've got it back together. And uh, as you can see, there's a little flap there. That's where your SD card goes. And here's where your Pi is mounted. You've got easy access to your Ethernet jack and all your USB ports. And then around the back, you'll have access to your HDMI and USB-C and your audio ports and all that good stuff. Here's the flap I was talking about for your SD card. You lift that up and you have perfect, simple access to the SD card. And there it is. And then you can just close it right back up. You'll see two little holes around the back and that's if you want to run your HDMI out that way you can do that I'm not gonna worry about that I'm just gonna plug it in like normal and uh, there it is everything is back together there are the two holes I was talking about for your HDMI and possibly your USB-C or whatever you want to run through that I again I'm not gonna worry about that it's not necessary all right and it's put back together and here it is there's the keyboard you see this little flap here this uh, has your on off switch uh, you just stick your finger in there and turn it off or on there's just a little switch inside and there's the vent where the fan rests and that's it let's hook this thing up to a capture card and we'll see how it works both in RetroPie and iRaspian all right we're in RetroPie now and everything I'm doing right now I'm controlling with the keyboard so I just want you to be able to see that it functions just like a normal keyboard would function. I haven't had any dead areas or anything yet. 
I'm scrolling through these MS DOS games right now, and let's see if we can play one of these. Let's play Solar Winds, and uh, we'll see if we can control it with the keyboard like we're supposed to be able to. Uh, yeah, we can do that just fine. Uh, it works just like you'd use a regular keyboard on MS DOS. The trackpad should work on games that require a mouse as well. This one doesn't really require a mouse. So I don't need to test that functionality here, but it works great. And uh, I can play this game just like I was on an MS-DOS PC playing it in the 80s or 90s. It works beautifully. No configuration needed. I just popped into DOSBox and it worked just fine. So that's really cool. So, you know, theoretically you can do a lot of things. You can make yourself a Commodore 64 you know, replica, if you put a little paint job or some stickers on it, and uh, you can run Commodore 64 stuff through RetroPie or whatever other emulator you want to use that's compatible with the Raspberry Pi. You can do all sorts of things with this. I just think it's awesome. All right, here we are in iRaspian, and uh, everything functions just fine. The keyboard, the trackpad, it seems to work great. What I'd like to do is go ahead and open up a LibreOffice file and do just a little bit of typing just to kind of see how the keyboard works in here. I imagine it'll be a smooth experience, but let's find out. All right, I've got that LibreOffice file getting ready to open. And once it does, we will do a little typing. Oh yeah, this is perfectly fine. I could use this you know, all the time. And in fact, I think I might keep my Raspberry Pi 4 in this thing all the time. I don't think it's going to come out of the case for a while. I mean, this is really cool because you can hook up like a power bank to it and uh, get a portable monitor, uh, which I actually have here. I'll be doing a review on one of those. And you could go outside and play your video games or take it with you somewhere and not have to worry about electricity or anything like that. I've got a solar powered power bank that I'd love to try that out with. And uh, let's uh, use the trackpad and the keyboard to surf the internet here. I mean, it's going to be fine, but, you know, I like to do as many tests as I can. So here we are on YouTube, and uh, I'm going to pull up my YouTube channel with the trackpad here. Yeah, so far this uh, Vilros Raspberry Pi case is just awesome. I absolutely love it. Like, I'm really impressed with this thing. I picked it up for about, I believe it was about 40 or $50 on Amazon. And I'll have a link to that below if anyone wants to check it out. But yeah, I was able to pull up my YouTube videos and type online, type in LibreOffice, use the trackpad. It's just such a smooth, seamless, perfect experience. And you know, I really expected nothing less. Uh, that's all I really have to say for today. Would I recommend this? Yes, I would. At the price point? Oh yeah, it's awesome. Check this out. Again, I'm going to link it below. I've got a lot more videos coming. I appreciate you all. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And hit that bell for notifications. Thanks for watching Retro Tech Toys. I will see you next time.